In today's video, I want to talk about one of the fundamental misconceptions or misunderstandings with lighting in photography. So I recently opened up my questions on Instagram as I do every week, and I noticed a trend in questions. So I started to dig a bit deeper. And the common question, which I'm sure you've asked, I know I've asked it, and I'm sure you've heard it is, what's a good lighting setup? What's a good easy hard light setup? What's a good two light setup? What's a good three light setup? Now, these are all kind of valid questions, but at the same time, are completely misguided. Now, what I'm going to try and do here is give you a little bit of information to help you understand how to light properly and to save you spending years putting out mediocre images. Now, this is purely from a commercial standpoint. So I'll have a client come up to me and they'll say, we've got these ice lollies we need photographing. The whole campaign's based around 1990s British holidays in Italy. It's that midday sun, it's that gold crisp light caused by the houses and the stone reflecting it around those hazy sorts of days. Can you recreate that for us? And I'll be like, yes, I can. And in my head, I'll go, right, what are the components of that aesthetic, of that vibe? I'll look at it and go, well, it's midday sun, the sun's high, it's small in the sky, it's going to be hard light. So we need a small hard light source. There's gonna be a certain specularity to the light. It's not gonna be diffused, there's no clouds in the sky. It's just one of those like bright, bright days. So we already know that we need some form of specular reflector like this. We also know that this needs to be the sort of distance from the subject that the sun would appear to be from it in real life. So obviously vastly smaller than the sun, but relatively we might only need to put it 10 foot up in the air to make it look like real sunlight. And that is one of the first things I do on any campaign, on any shoot, is work out what it is we're trying to create. Now the problem comes about when educators, YouTubers like myself, um, and lighting companies start selling kits and ideas that there's a certain way to do it. You must have this gradation by using a strip box and a scrim. You must have this rim light, you must have this hair light, whatever it may be in the setup, which means that you have to buy something. I've never had a client ask for a rim light or a hair light. I've never had a client ask for a three light setup. These things just don't exist. However, a better way of looking at it is to sort of understand it's, do we need diffuse light or specular light? Is it hard or soft? Do we need some sort of parabolic effect to this to give it an even throw? Do we need the fall off to shadows to be great or very even? And then based on that, we can start to pull these ideas together to create an aesthetic. And remember, as photographers, we're trying to create an aesthetic. In the 80s and 90s, being able to do a three light setup was absolutely brilliant. 2021, no one cares. It is so easy for a child with a phone to take an image better than most of us. So we need to really understand the, the true meaning behind the images and start to create it. And the way that I liked my work, and this is the way that I would suggest you all have a go. It might not work for you, but it might at least help you find the way that does work for you is this. I turn up on set with the thing I need to photograph. I choose my camera settings first. Now I work as a commercial photographer, everything's in my control, 100 ISO, F10, F13, and 200th of a second. They're my sort of rough settings. Now based on that, I take a frame and it should come out completely black regardless of what's going on in the room. At this point, I close my eyes and I sort of imagine myself painting the photograph. And that sounds pretentious as hell and I'm not at all an arty person, but you need to imagine that you're painting this image. So let's see, where's the light going to come from? We've got some text on there. It's got to come left to right. The key light's got to come from the left because we need to make sure that people read the image in the right direction. So we place our key light. We choose the power to be correct for the camera settings we've already chosen. We don't pop the light down, then try and make exposure. We've already chosen what the camera settings are for the depth of field, for the sharpness, for the quality of image. Now we just start to paint it in. So we've got that first light in. Then we take a look at it and we go, do we need something? Is the fall off too great? Do we need to move the light further back? But would that make it too soft, uh, too hard? Because it suddenly gets smaller relative to the subject. So do we need to put in a second light or a fill card? Let's have a look, let's paint something else in there. And that's how I go about building my images. There are no setups. Every shot I take is a completely unique set of lights. Nothing's ever the same. There's no go-to setting. There's no go-to setup. There's no, I'm gonna do a three light setup on this. It is a step-by-step -step pragmatic approach to painting the light onto the image. And I really do think that imagining that black frame and taking it, and I still take it 10, 15 years into my career, that blank frame, first of all, so you can see what you're painting. You're imagining your studio lights or your paintbrushes, and that's what you're showing your customer or your client. And I feel that that way of learning to light and thinking about lighting is far more useful than thinking about setups and techniques and you know, if we do this and this, it creates that and that's great. You know, 
I shot a Guinness glass recently and I did the gradation down the side. Um, and it was more for a test for the dynamic range of a sensor for a job we potentially had coming up, which we ended up not getting, but that's by the by. I would not have put a gradation down the side of a glass or a bottle. No one needs to see that. It's very 80s and 90s. No one needs a scrim and a and your strip box going across it. It's like, we've all seen that, it's very dated. It is now far more about aesthetic and the emotion that the image pulls out of you because like I've said, kids on TikTok and Instagram do a better job than most of us. Having all this gear doesn't make us a professional. The difference now is that you have to actually be able to understand the aesthetic the client's trying to achieve and then produce it. And yes, that takes a great deal of technical ability, which is far greater than that of the 80s and 90s, it's also a very different approach. So we're trying to approach things in a very different way. We need to move forward as photographers, otherwise we will be left and we'll be the influencers shooting everything, which I have no problem with. If they move ahead of us and they're in a place where they are better than us and they can do a better job for the clients, absolutely they should be shooting on their iPhone and posting it to Instagram, why not? And that's why I think that we have to, as a group, move forward in the way that we view lighting and that we view equipment and setups and all of this sort of thing. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. If you wanna hear more videos like this, let me know and I'll try and put some together for you. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.